Has there been any celebrities in your DMs? Yes. Okay, wait, you have to drop names. Sergio. I can't drop names though. Sergio! I can't drop names. I feel like it's everything like everybody says all the time. Is it I can't people that you would never believe? Yeah, ever. Okay, like blue check marks, but like, are we talking OnlyFans girls, actresses, models, Insta babes? Uh, Give me categories. Uh, Insta, uh, I'd say Insta babes and OnlyFans models the most. Okay. And like A list celebrities is like like not a lot. Okay. But like you, a couple. Can you name me one? One. <laughs> or like give hints. Uh, TV personality. Okay, like Love Island. No. It was, it's like an old, like it used to be like an old TV show, but it's still like. You can name the TV show. <laughs> uh, somebody from the cast. Of You're listening to the X Podcast. The X you keep coming back to. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the X Podcast. Before I start this episode, don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe. If you don't have time to watch the full episode, then head on to Snapchat. Follow me there. You'll get eight-minute clips. So do all that and then enjoy this episode I have with the one and only Sergio from Sergio Talks. Buongiorno. <laughs> How do you feel being back here? It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. It's weird, but it's fun. It's like, like you mentioned before, it's like it's coming around full circle. It's just, it's crazy to me that we know each other because of the first time you came on the podcast when I was with my partner. Yep. And then after that, you dated my partner. So it's both our exes. <laughs> yeah, literally, literally. We're making a comeback. Yeah. Don't worry, Veronica. It's something crazy. <laughs> but I feel like you guys never spoke about really like your relationship and like, Never mm. mentioned anything, which I think is kind of a good. Yeah, it was very much so private, but not secret. Yeah, like if anybody would ask me, like I would be, I would say like I'm a hundred percent in a committed relationship. And if people saw us in pub like, public, <laughs> if people saw us in public, we were never like, oh, like stop holding hands or whatever. Right. It's not like that. Yeah. Yeah. What would you say is the biggest thing you learned from that relationship? Oh, jeez, a lot. Um. The the biggest highlight point for sure was just to be more like myself, like present myself as who I am and like allow the person to decide if they love that version of you or not. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's yeah, cute. Yeah. yeah. When did you know you wanted to start a podcast? When you came on our... Uh, <laughs> my God. When Maybe we should get back into drinking. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> oh, my God. So Sergio and I are on... Well, how long have you have you not been drinking? Like since I had my last drink was like three months ago. Three months ago. Yeah. And but how do you feel? I feel amazing. Like the last time I got like drunk was longer than that. But like a, like a proper couple of drinks was three months ago. Is and you... why did you stop? It was a thing where me and my friends, Matt suggested it. He was like, uh, what do you guys think about starting in, I forgot, I think it was March. He was like, what do you guys think about like stopping cold turkey? Like no drinks, no drugs, no, no, none of that. And we don't do that anyways to, to, yeah. to begin with. And we said, sure. And then the first came around. And then since then, we just haven't drank at all. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, maybe a glass of wine there. Yeah. But like when you're having dinner or if like you need to schmooze with people or if it's yeah, an occasion, just, you don't want to look dumb. For sure. Yeah. But like to actually drink, we haven't drank since. Don't you feel like your clarity levels are like through the roof now? 100%. Way more productive. Yeah. Everything's a lot more clear. Because the thing about when you drink is like you'll drink and then the next day you feel like shit. It's and not then, about the day of drinking. Yeah. It's the fact that like the recuperation is not even two days. It's like it fucks with literally the... Pro I, I'm not productive for like three days 100%. after that. Yeah, especially all of us. Like we like we go to the gym like every single day, right? So like right. if you miss a day at the gym, then like your whole cycle of what you've been trying to do gets all like thrown all over the place and then like you just lose balance. Yeah. So it's just not, it's not a vibe. I feel that. It's a month solid, but like I changed my entire diet too. Mm. There's a lot of things going on, but I feel really good. And now that I'm only doing this for a month. Yeah. I'm like, I don't think I want to continue drinking for a little bit. Like, I don't feel like the need. I don't feel the need to be that girl who's like, I don't drink. Yeah. But I just don't think I need to make it a thing where I like have to drink because the month is over. Yeah. It also Does depends what kind of lifestyle do you want to go for, right? Like yeah. for us, like, let's say, for example, us as guys, like for us to get into the club and whatnot, like you have to spend money on bottles. Yeah. Right? So because we don't drink, 
we're definitely not going to go clubbing because then we have to spend money on drinks that we're not even going to drink. So right. it's like, what's the point? But I think everything is just better. Yeah, the whole you, it's a whole lifestyle change. Yeah. yeah. So what do you do on your free time? Honestly, as of late, we've only been traveling, I'd say. Okay, nice. Because if we're not traveling, we're at home. And if we're at home, we're working. Okay, so let's talk about the whole dynamic because yeah. it's you. Yeah. Matt yeah. and Carl, Carl and then yeah. you said there was a fourth person there's a fourth person that we're gradually integrating to the podcast okay. bit by bit yeah. right I've seen him yeah and can you explain the whole dynamic of how the podcast came about and like obviously you guys are all living together so explain yeah. me the whole dynamic because it's just like yeah. it's wild to me um, so me Matt and Michu moved in together um, we were already doing the podcast by then this was obviously after uh, we broke up uh, me and my ex and then the podcast came to light because Matt and Carl did a TV show, Love Island, for here in Quebec. Okay. And then Matt was dealing with a marketing agency that they had a podcast studio. And they're like, hey, let's do like a mutual benefit uh, of, of exchange of services. You guys come you know, in the studio, promote the, the studio, studio, and then we'll, we'll just run it like that. And we've been there ever since. And the podcast was never something that I thought I'd want to do, but... When life kind of like presents opportunities, yeah. you kind of just try it and you roll with it, you know? For sure. So I said, you just try podcasting and see how it is. So I went under the same umbrella as the Sergio Talks uh, because it was supposed to just, oops, I'm <laughs> fighting with the mic. Because uh, it was supposed to be just me at first and they were going to occasionally come on and I was going to have guests and blah, 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 blah. Um, but then it was just something that they just kept coming. People kept loving them. They loved the dynamics. So I was like, you know what? Might as well just make it a permanent thing. Yeah. So I, I made them officially my co-hosts. And now that things are doing, you know, better and whatnot, we felt that we could start integrating a fourth person. Because uh, when Michu had came on as like a feature, people loved him, right? Okay. And he's part of the friend group, right? Yeah. So it just added energy. A hundred percent. So it kind of put like the whole like bringing on guests aside because now we're four. We take up the whole spot. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we'll see where it goes. It's kind of like the, like the, like the trial period. You know, we're, t we're testing the water to see if it works or not. He's on uh, probation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's, <laughs> he's on like, probation. fuck, I hope I don't say anything that gets me kicked <laughs> no, off this no, podcast. No, 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 he's good, he's good, he's good. That's so funny. Yeah. And like, how do you balance, obviously, working together, hmm. living together? Like, do you guys always, do you guys like bicker? Like, how do you deal with <clears throat> kind of eat, breathing and yeah. like working and sleeping together? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I I feel like I've been very lucky with the group of friends that I do have. Like, we don't step on each other's toes. Everybody okay. cleans up after one another. Everybody's, everybody's a clean freak. So, for, in that aspect, living together, it's a breeze. And, like, we hang out. Like, we'll, we'll rarely be, like, in our own separate rooms and not talking to each other. Okay. We'll have our moments where we're working, but then, like, we'll meet up and share the living space and, like, have a good time, right? You guys are, like, the hype house. It's, it felt, it feels Literally, like a Literally, you guys house. are the, you're, you're the frat yeah. hype house yeah, podcasters. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, but it's fun. And the reason why it works so well is because, like, if ever I see, like, if ever they see me working and, like, they have nothing to do, it's going to put them in the mood to want to work as well. For sure. Right. Or, like, if I'm getting ready to go to the gym, like, someone's going to want to come and tag along. Right. I feel like if everybody's, like, living separately, yeah. you don't have that motivation. You don't have someone, like, in your face outworking you or out going it's to the gym. It's so true. You know? It's so true. I have a girlfriend where she's doing something completely different and every time she wants to chill, I'm like, I don't mind chilling, but I have to do this so we can like chill and yeah. work. And she's like, Alessia, I just want to say like, every time I'm around you, I get so motivated to work. And like, you don't think that somebody feels that way when you're like motivated, but yeah. it's crazy to see the impact it has when somebody's like motivated because they're around. Like you are who you surround yourself with. A thousand with. percent, absolutely. And I think we all bring out the best in one another. We haven't had like a bickering situation. We haven't had a fighting situation. We haven't fought. Uh, I know it all sounds like too good to be true. Did you guys ever have like um like fight over a girl situation? No, never, 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 never. Come on, make something up. Make no, this podcast no. interesting. <laughs> no, because the reason is, is like we all have different types. So like we don't overstep on each other's types, like very different types, you know. So yeah, uh, but we're very respectful too. We, everybody just stays in their lane. Everybody knows like what like like where their their spot is. For sure. But what happens when like you guys go out or used to go out, and let's say a girl that maybe like Matt was hitting on is like into you instead? Like how do you guys navigate that? Uh, it, honestly, it's free game. Like if anything, like <laughs> okay. it's like if, if 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 I'm talking to a girl and like she's interested in Matt, it's like by all means. Like yeah. I want my brother to eat, you know. So yeah. it's like. <laughs> So it's like, you know, it's like she's yours and I'll be rooting for him, right? Uh, and that's the whole thing about like dating and like talking to girls. You can't take anything personal. Yeah. Like especially like there's so many guys that go into certain circumstances to want to pick up a girl that if they get rejected, they take it so personal. 
Yeah. But like it, it, it can be that way. Yeah. Before we get into girls and dating, because we're definitely going to talk about that. I want to talk a little bit more of your, about your podcast. So you yeah. started. What is it? Is it a year yet? It's been a year in. Oh, shoot. I don't remember. I think November. November. Yeah. I just want to say congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, you are absolutely killing it. Not trying to gas you up, but like seriously, I feel like every time something hits, you don't forget about it. Like you mm-hmm. use that into the algorithm. And I just see the way you're navigating it and i just i respect honestly you. and your video editing is really good i don't mm. know if it's you who does it mm. you could tell like you absolutely love to do it yeah. because that takes so much time and work and i just want to say like wow Thank i'm you. really really impressed truthfully and in a year like the growth you had it's really it's yeah it's been it's been wild yeah yeah when you started was that your full-time job like were you just doing podcasting no. when i before podcasting i was still doing like life coaching i was like live streaming on tiktok and whatnot okay. selling merch and then because you were having your rants right you were doing your sergio talks yeah 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 okay. exactly yeah, yeah exactly so i was still doing like that uh those kind of tiktoks and whatnot but i i i, I, I didn't associate to that kind of content anymore i didn't feel like it's who i resonated with yeah and then the podcast your google who, quotes yeah exactly my google <laughs> quotes it's true remember we said that on the last <laughs> you episode you take your quotes from google and like, oh, well that's me <laughs> Um, but then afterwards, but were uh, you making money at that point on, on TikTok? I just, for people who want to get into podcasting and stuff, I want to kind of give them like just a little idea of how you make money, especially as Canadians. It's a little bit more difficult than people in the U S yeah. My two main sources of income was selling merch and life coaching. Okay. So doing one-on-one sessions, a lot, a lot of people wanted to talk and a lot of people wanted to buy merch because some people were a fan of what I, my content and other people really valued what I had to say, right? Because okay. there's a distinguishment, right? Because yeah. my content is not going to magically heal you, right? Yeah. But like a one-on-one session is going to is gonna go that extra mile. and um, That's cool, the one-on-one session. It was cool. And I liked it a lot. I genuinely did. It's just that like, it's very time consuming and like the payout wasn't the same. Like, it, like yeah, sure, it was great. But like, like for example, if I wanted advice, how yeah. much would I pay to get like a... For an hour is 125 bucks. For an hour, $120. Yeah. Now that you're bigger, <laughs> it's going to start being a G for well, an I hour. St- I stopped it. I stopped it. <laughs> I don't do it anymore. Like from time to time, I'll, I'll open a DM and I'll still answer it. Okay. Like if somebody still needs help and whatnot, but like, I'll, I'll, I won't charge anybody for it anymore. Was it mostly sure. girls who were asking for help? Uh, at the beginning, yeah, but then afterwards, like the dynamic switch, like a lot of guys were asking for advice too. Okay, and yeah. like, was there ever girls that were trying to like shoot their shot in that hour? Or? Uh, I mean, some like, of them they were hidden? hinting at it. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> yeah, you know, like oh, I'm going through a breakup, but are you single though? And I was like, okay, relax. <laughs> You're like, uh, this hour is gonna be long. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, but it was fun. Like, don't get me wrong, it was very, very humbling. Like to, to I think that was what kept me grounded. I mean, like until this day, mm-hmm. is like knowing that other people are going through the same shit that you're going yeah. through uh was a very very life-changing experience for sure um and so going back to what we were saying before from going from that to then doing the podcast is because i said okay you know what i'm gonna go all in on the podcast because like, it's picking up yeah but i don't have time to be doing all of it right yeah, for sure so i'm like you know what kind of gotta pick your battles exactly sometimes. i said fuck it i'm gonna go full-time podcast i'll you know i'll live off my savings and whatever this that and a third but then, while I was in a relationship, what had happened was, is that, uh, obviously, here in Canada, we all know we get screwed with the taxes. Yep. So, I was trying to keep a lot of money in, like, PayPal and, oh. you, know, you know, right? Oh, my God, Sergio. <laughs> exactly. So, every, I think every, like, entrepreneur, content creator knows yeah. that, like, that's where you want to keep your money, right? Yeah, Ideally, until, but... Until they ban you and then you can't take your money. Exactly. So, that's exactly what happened. So, while I was in a relationship, I had multiple accounts get closed right yeah. so i was like struggling in the midst of all that and at the same time i didn't want to let my partner know that this is what i like i was going through this yeah. right because you know it's 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 a hit to the ego for sure right? and i get that um so so that was happening and then on top of that i was trying to go for the podcast and no like no money was coming in savings were put on hold so there's a, a bunch of things i was going wrong at the same time right yeah and i think for at least like a good six months six months like we didn't see a penny like not not a dime and then like i think like at the seven eighth month mark is when things like really started like yeah. like taking like taking a off launch. yeah yeah and 
I mean, technically, like to start a podcast and to be already making money. I know you already had like a following before, but to be making money six, seven months in is pretty impressive. Mm. I know that we only started making money like a year and a half in, like yeah. almost two years in. So seven months, like honestly, count your blessings. That's Absolutely. great. Where does your revenue come from now? Now, uh, Patreon, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Snapchat. Okay, I, I want to know because I remember when we when when you were still with Veronica. Yeah, we were like Sergio, get your fucking show on Snapchat. Yeah. So you're using it now? Not the show. You're doing like the stories. We have individual Snapchat account now. Me, me, Matt, and Carl. Yeah. Okay. Can you tell me about that? Should I yeah. open that too? Absolutely. You're like, yeah, yep. that's where the money is. <laughs> yeah, a thousand percent. It's okay, like, because I'm doing pretty good on like the stories. Yeah. Well, you guys were always doing good on on the Snapchat uh, show. Yeah. Yeah. But like individually, you'd also do really, really good. Okay, too. so what? It is, basically, I'm just posting things. Yeah, and there's ad sense in between snaps. So like, if you post like let's say 32 snaps like every second or third snap there's an ad running right so it's like the so it's probably yeah. even better than what i'm doing yeah well that's why any 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 content creator that you see example bryce hall and, and like and names oh, they're like that, killing it yeah, they're probably making like <sighs> easily six figures a month yeah easily six figures yeah. a month I, but you see that like the amount of snaps they post are like at like 30 40 50 snaps a day but how do they how do people follow you now like you just make the account as if like you're sergio and then mm -hmm. you tell people from other platforms to follow you on snap uh we like we all did it once we did like the initial shout out like here's our snapchat but other than that like you appear on people's for you page on snapchat right so it's the exact same thing like what i'm doing for my videos yeah exactly okay interesting i'm gonna look into yeah. that yeah and like your cover picture is the one that you want to grab people's attention when it shows up on the For You page, mm -hmm. right? So you make sure it's a, a thirst trap or... And like, I wonder if I... do you Did you connect that from like when we had got you on from your podcast? No, this was, this was happening through someone else. This is something else. Yeah. Okay, so you're going to give me the contact for that. Yeah, yeah, sure. Or... I, think, I think it's the same contact. Nader? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's the same contact because... It's a whole long story because like we're doing a whole bunch of different things and like the way like it all comes full circle again it all yeah. came back down to him who him he set us up to having our own personal snapchats put there okay okay so cool so i have a random question but of all of you on snapchat who's making the most <laughs> uh i'd most likely say probably matt matt yeah really he uses it the most what He's, does he say on it like he um, talks or is he showing like body a, a little bit of both like whenever we're together right traveling also does amazing but whenever it's, we're together just showing the dynamic asking us questions facebook are you doing like you just put on like the ads on your videos no or i just post the videos and you have to so facebook has to allow you to be eligible to have ads running on your videos right you have to get to a point where you have like a certain amount of subscribers yeah you have an eligibility with with facebook they check out your content make sure you're not breaking any violations and then they allow you to make uh ads on reels that's what they call it okay. that's what it's called right okay. uh, and then they pay you for x amount of views etc cetera, etc cetera. almost the same dynamic as youtube and which one would you say is more profitable now yeah uh, definitely patreon for sure okay uh but like out of the platforms that are running ads for yeah. example i'd say uh youtube youtube facebook okay yeah basically advertisers will put certain advertising based on the kind of content you're making right so if they feel that their ad is suitable for podcast uh, they're going to most likely want to put like uh, more budget towards it therefore your uh, your click-through rate and also the amount of uh, pay that you get per click is going to be higher okay I so see. It, it depends on the kind of content that you're making you know okay okay i see yeah okay okay we'll move on from that but i might uh, message you on the side <laughs> <Yeah>. there <laughs> um, okay well that's amazing that's great mm. so let's get into dating <laughs> wait are you single right now yeah okay like single as fuck or like single but like there's a couple girls who no, think they're no, dating no. Single you as fuck. <laughs> are you very intentional when dating like do you tell them it's nothing serious i haven't gone on a date since i haven't gone on a date since my breakup wow i actually just spoke about this with my friends like before yesterday okay yeah no and if i were to how date... happy are you to hear that babe <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't been on a date since. It's not my thing. It's not what I'm going for. If it were to happen, like, I'm not closed off to it. Yeah. I'm not closed off to the idea, but it's not, like, my mind is is not there right now. There's, like, yeah. way too much going on. The last thing that I have on my mind is, like, a girl, a date. Yeah. yeah let alone a girl, right? Um, it's not... The thing is, like, the reason why I'm saying I'm not closed off is because if there's someone that understands my lifestyle and understands I'm not going to have, like, all the time in the world to be able to, yeah. like, cater to you, like, I won't be able to date you. 
Yeah. And many girls, obviously, they don't know what that, like, what like what is required of them to understand that i think a lot of people at the beginning say they want that but then when they get that it kind of changes because then they realize well wait i thought i wanted that but now i'm like hello like you're not paying attention to me you know i think it's a happy medium it's like yeah give and take you know like it's it's tough for yeah. sure. But um, I prefer somebody who's absolutely busy than fucking sitting on his ass. What do you look for when dating? Um, I mean, when I'm looking for dating, it's kind of someone who, like like, like I just said, that like, gets me, understands mm-hmm. the lifestyle, understands what comes with it, and that is okay with it, and is also able to understand the industry that I'm in, right? Because let's say, for example... Mm, that's a good one. Well, I mean, like, imagine, like, I, I, mean, fuck I say so that. much shit up, Sergio. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You have no idea. I'm not in a relationship now because I fuck everything up. Because you say the wrong thing out of context, and like your partner's gonna be like, "What the fuck? Like, why did you say that way?" And right? I'm like, "It's not that deep. It's not. It's I'm really, just really trying not. to fucking <laughs> pay the bills." Yeah, literally. I'm like, whatever I say that's outlandish is gonna yeah, land. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And like, like now it's been it's a tough. thing where like us and the guys like are are. Like our stitch is like it's it's like being single, right? Like that's our thing, you know. So like, if we're with someone, like, I always think about that. I mean, too. like, do you stop? Do you milk it? Like, what? How are you supposed to do it, right? So, like, uh, like the change of content is just very different. It's doable, yeah. but like, it's hard. Like, you have to be more hush hush. You have to be more careful with your words, which is fine. It's like when you're in a relationship, you have to respect your partner in the relationship. But it's yeah. like like all of us were kind of like all in the same boat like you know is dating for us right now like can we afford to to do that right now and it's like where our mindset is not there at all yeah yeah and how old are you now 27 you have so much time yeah i know but like you know i've I've been wanting kids since like yesterday (laughs) how many kids do you want four you want four i want three like with me and my partner i'd like to adopt one at least oh my god that's so cute and you're from a family of how many three Okay, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. I'm from a family of three, two, and I want between, yeah, three. Three and four? Four Four's is a bit like, it. you're clearly not the one pushing the baby, it yeah, seems. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> like, yeah. You're, you're talking like sweet more... Sweet of you, though, to want to adopt one, though. That's so sweet of you. <laughs> that, I'll do the fourth. Honey, you don't want to push out a fourth? We'll, <laughs> we'll adopt one. I'm dead. Who do you think of the four of you is going to have kids first? Intentionally? <laughs> I don't know because <laughs> listen um, <laughs> out of us all wait my next question is who has got someone pregnant <laughs> <laughs> no one has kids no, no one's pregnant um, I think the one that would have kids first is either between me or Carl okay yeah because Carl's a big lover boy and Carl hasn't been in a relationship for a long long time and uh, but like now with like a lot of like the I say this humbly, like a lot, like because of all the attention that's coming, like there's a lot more options that are out there, right? So like the chances of him falling into a relationship are, yeah, you know, they're getting there. Okay, well, since we're on that topic, I was gonna ask you. <laughs> I feel like you already know what I'm gonna ask. Uh, <laughs> Has there been any celebrities in your DMs? Yes. Okay, wait. You have to drop names. Sergio. I can't drop names though. Sergio. I can't drop uh, names. I feel like it's everything. Like everybody says all the time. Is it I can't people drop that names. you would never believe? Yeah, ever. Okay, like blue check marks, but like, are we talking OnlyFans girls, actresses, models, Insta babes? Uh, Give me categories. Uh, Insta, uh, I'd say Insta babes and OnlyFans models the most. Okay. And like A list celebrities is like like not a lot. Okay. But like you, a couple. Can you name me one? No, I could show you one. <laughs> name one. Give, give I the can't viewer. Name it. <laughs> or like give hints. Um. When you say A list, though, like a well, I don't know what you consider A list. An actress. Uh, I somewhat a uh, TV personality. I think it's okay. Like the so like they were on a dating show. Somewhat, yeah. Okay, like Love Island. No, it was. It's like an old. Like it used to be like an old TV show, but it's still like you can name the TV show. <laughs> uh, somebody from the cast of Jersey Shore. Okay, now I get why you didn't say it because <laughs> there's three people. <laughs> exactly. So it's like whatever. Okay. I'll leave it at that. Okay, we'll leave it at that. Um, But you'll tell me when we get off. Yeah, sure. No problem. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, guys, there's three girls. You'll figure it out. (laughs) Um, Okay. And, like, she slid in? Yeah. And what 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 does she slide in with? The thing about, I feel like, people like that is, like, they they don't play games. It's like they cut to the chase. Are you single? Are you not single? Like, do you want to do this or do you want to do that? So they come in straight, like, hot. Yeah. So are you single is what they came in with. Yeah. 
The answer Damn. was yes. Damn. Okay. Yeah. So many other questions, but I know you don't <laughs> want to keep asking that I, to I, me. It's just, it's just 100%. Like, I get it. I get it. Trust yeah. me. Um, okay. Like it's flattering, but it's also, it's not, it's not for me. Yeah. Respectfully. It's not for yeah. me. Yeah. But Jersey Shore is one of the best. I don't know. It was. One of the best shows ever. It was, it was, it was like a very like. It was a very like cool experience to say the least. Like, yeah. you know, like I didn't need it to go like any further than that. Like, yeah, you, for, you're entertained. You got for, like, the you got the like satisfaction. Exactly right. You get the satisfaction, then you're like, okay, no. Like, I know that feeling when like even when it's someone like who hits in and like you don't give a fuck. I can only imagine what it's like for girls because like I feel like the the yeah. men celebrities are a lot more thirstier than like the girl celebrities. Yeah. Are you, sure. you're right? you see <laughs> yeah, I guess. I mean, how many like girl celebrities do you know are inviting like you know a bunch of guys to their house to like have a house party? Yeah, it's not true. happening. True. You Unless know. you're on Jersey Shore. Yeah, you know. Let's see. There you go. <laughs> Advice on asking a girl out in public. I used to have this shtick where it was like, oh, like I don't grow up to girls, whatever, blah blah blah. Stupid move. <laughs> 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 um, because. The, the reason why I was like that is, one, there was the fear of rejection, mm -hmm. right? Like, me and my friends are like that. Matt's not like that. Matt will go after anything that he wants, which is great. Um, but what happens when he gets rejected? How does he feel? Oh, he, he doesn't care at all. He doesn't okay. take it personal. It's like, okay, like, you know, I'll have to have a good night. And, you know, he goes about his business. Anything you do in life, when you get used to doing it, every time you get a no or rejected it, whether yeah. it's in business whether it's someone you're trying to date everything just gets easier yeah it's just always the initial like beginning when you're like you've never done it it's yeah. hard yeah and we it's funny that you say that because we spoke about this not too long ago and we were talking to like when's the right you know when's like the appropriate time to go up to a girl for example and we were giving like, certain examples of what the best time would be and we said like the number one do not do is like don't try to interrupt a girl while she's walking like towards somewhere Cause you don't know if she's trying to go to the bathroom. She does mm. want to. She doesn't want to like lose her group of friends. So like, if you try to grab her as she's walking by, chances are is that she might say like, "You're failing." Like I can't. Like or like oh like I don't want to lose my friends or I'm going to the bathroom. Yeah, right? smart. Yeah, it's like wait for her to like be at the table or be by the bar and then you could go and approach her. That's fucking smart. Well, because I'm the only reason why I say that is because the amount of guys that I see trying to do that, stopping a girl, like yeah, like whistle calling a girl, whistle calling, like, try to grab her by the waist as she's moving past. And also, it's kind of creepy. Yeah. You know, like I feel like you need to approach a girl when she's like in her calm energy. Yeah, exactly. When she's like a bit stressed, it ain't it. No, forget it. And and girls know as they're walking that chances are they're going to be hit on too, right? So, like, yeah. if she's rejecting you, it might not be anything personal. It's probably because she's also rejected, like, a couple guys before. or And, like I said, she's probably having to go to the bathroom or she wants to stay with her girlies. Like, there's a whole bunch of oh, things going through her mind. Is that what she told you? She was going to the bathroom? <laughs> I, did, I never tried. <laughs> I, like I said, afraid of rejection. I watch that. other people get rejected for a living. <laughs> okay, so your advice would be don't go up to a girl? <laughs> <laughs> no, very, very good. Yeah, no. Okay. Wait for her to be like, a, like, like established somewhere where, like, she, like, like she's in her yeah. like confident element. I should yeah. say. Do you give eye contact before just to see if the vibes are there? Yeah, I think I, th I think that's like the number one indicator is the yeah. eye contact. She's not looking at you. Don't go up to her. <laughs> if she hasn't even looked your way, <laughs> yeah. you crossed her a no, million exactly. times. It ain't it. But listen, if you're feeling ballsy, then go for it. Yeah, you know what? Girls do like someone who just. Do they? Yeah. Really? I think I think we like to say no, but I, I do. Okay, look. Girl language. Wait, hold on. Girl math, yeah. literally. <laughs> I think you have to be somewhat, like, attracted. Yeah, and you have to come in with, like, some suave, some... Yes, yeah, some Rico Suave. Yeah, you can't just be like, hi. A hundred percent. Right? Yeah, for sure. Okay, and what would you say is your top three icks in a girl? Like, what can a girl do to just turn you the fuck off? Oh man! You're like, should I pull out the list? <laughs> Please pull out the list. I talk about the icks for men all the time, so I think it's time I get some thrown in my face. If she if she talks a lot about herself and only about herself, okay. definite ick. Okay. Like if you if you if I'm bringing up something, if I'm bringing up like a like let's say I travel to such a place and like rather than ask me more about it, you just flip the script and talk about yourself mm -hmm. and the time that you went. I'm just gonna be like, just wait your turn, honey. Yeah, 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 you know? yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, someone who's rude. Rude to the waiter, yeah. rude to other people, can't do. Yeah. Um, and then I'd say another ick is someone that lacks empathy. Ooh, 
Ooh, that's a good one. That's a huge one for me. That's a huge one for me. I would never be able to. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like anybody that like I've been in a relationship with or that I've met has always been like in those aspects, like very well, like yeah. grounded. Yeah. Yeah. Which is good. Okay, let's talk about the famous question that I feel like everyone always talks about and it's so repetitive and so annoying, but we're going to talk about it here because, I mean, listen, we're repetitive and annoying here. <laughs> going on a date, splitting 50-50, how do you feel about that? Men who do that are trash. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, Sergio. <laughs> I, you know, and it's funny because... Like, the more that you understand, like, why you should do that, the more it just makes sense. Like, there's no... I don't understand people that try to argue their way out of it. Like, the, I think the number one thing that men use as an argument is, like, okay, but, like, I also have value. So, like, why isn't she also paying 50-50? Yeah, but you're going to get... You're going to get compensated in a different way. Yeah. You know? You, but the thing about guys that they don't understand is that you get compensated long term. Yes, exactly. So like that's like the big like Exactly. At the beginning, you have to do all the things to impress a girl, and then once she feels comfortable, safe, wanting to be with you, she will give you the world. Yeah. You know, but like you have to show that you're that man first. Yeah, exactly. And I think a lot of guys lack to be able to see that what you show at the beginning is it's like any investment. Yeah. Whatever you invest in now, long term is going to pay out, right? For sure. So, like, imagine, but also imagine this. Imagine a girl has a guy who is willing to pay the full bill, and there's a guy that's willing to pay 50 50. Why would she want to go with the guy who's willing to pay 50 50 when there's a ton of other guys that would be willing to pay the entire bill? Exactly. Make it make sense, fellas. Uh, I mean, it makes sense. And I think, like, Look, there's so many men crying in comments like why I'm uh, women make just as much as men now. Mm. We're not living in that like generation. Why should I have to pay? I'm equally as valued. But I think what they don't realize is that just whining in the comments <laughs> like it's not going to change anything. It is what it is. It's always been this way yeah. and it's not going to change. And no. it's, if anything, it's just I think we are living a little bit in a fucked up world where I think as a young girl, if you're hot, you can be living in the middle of fucking shikutsi me, okay? And you can be shown a lifestyle that's incredibly insane just by being hot. Yep. And I think what's so hard in this society is that a guy is not, no matter how good looking he is, he's never going to have that those privileges and be able to have that lifestyle. How many girls have been in private jets, sat in fucking crazy cars um yeah. been on crazy trips before men mm. or like have experiences that men will like never have or have they have to work to get there so yeah. i think i can see the frustration why men are so angry towards it but at the same time women and men are different mm -hmm. you know so i think as a man you need to kind of like work on your craft you need to become somebody that a girl would want to be with yeah 100 percent. and also as a man why wouldn't you want that for yourself why wouldn't you want to like be wanting to outwork every other man that's out there yeah like if you glorify the lifestyle that guys are being able to give to other girls then why not strive to be able to be that kind of guy yeah it also depends on what you want if you want to be with someone who is okay with you paying 50 50 fine sure no problem but like if you're expecting traditional like you also have to give traditional like you also have to court you have exactly. to be chivalrous you have to do all those deeds exactly yeah like um i have a friend who's like you know i i'm, I'm not the like normal traditional type but then like she wants everything on the man side to, to be, be traditional. traditional i'm yeah. like well you're no like sorry it's give and take it's it's like you're contradicting. If you want the guy who's going to pick up the bill and is going to do everything for you and like almost like pay your bills, then you're going to be more of the traditional girl who's at home cooking, mm. you know, cleaning. It's just what it is. You can't be the girl who like expects it all and then does nothing. Yeah. I think it's still you got to meet. Yeah. You know, I, 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 th I feel like for the most part, I might be misspeaking. because I don't know the actual statistics of this, but I feel like for the most part, guys are willing to pay 50 50. I think uh, sorry, are yeah. willing to pay the bill. Sorry. Yeah. I think like the what's more clickbaity on the Internet now is the whole 50 50 dynamic. I just don't know how many guys are out there are actually willing to pay to go 50 50 on a date. I don't know if it's more than a, like than average or if it's less. 
I don't know what the statistics are on that. It's fucking tough to find out. I don't know. But I, I've i never been on a day with a guy where that's ever happened. To, to pay 50-50? It's never happened. Have you ever paid a bill? No. Really? No. Wow. Okay, unless it was like my boyfriend's like birthday and I was like no, trying to, fine. you know what I mean? But or like, like dating, dating specifically. Dating and like I want to do cute things. Like, yes. But like, mm-hmm. I think it just goes back to like, he's getting the movie tickets. Like, I got the popcorn to be cute. Like, yeah. I think it's like doing little gestures to be like, I'm like doing little things, but. Yeah. Yeah, it's not about the dollar amount, I think, for a girl. I think it's showing Amanda, like, you're invested, you care, and you're cute. Yeah. I don't think it's more like a money thing. No, and, and I think that's what's important for the guy to be able to see as well. Yeah. Is, the, is, like, the return on something smaller. But so long as there is a return, shows how grateful, like, his yeah. girl is, at least. Exactly. Like, if there's nothing be returned ever except, like, her, her presence, it's, like, it's not... For it's, sure. It's not enough. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. I agree. Yep. Pay the bill. Pay the bill. <laughs> no 50-50. Why no not? 50-50. I think, well, actually, it was my ex, the one who, who said this was a big advocate about this. But essentially, like, if you like, if you don't have money, like, don't date. Introducing our sponsor for today, Joy Mode. Joy Mode is a natural product to get your willy up. So forget the over-the-counter pills. Joy Mode is a powder you put in your water 45 minutes to 5 hours before you need to get your willy up up have that erection firm and ready to go for your date sergio have you ever been in a situation where you were hooking up with a girl and you couldn't get your willy up one too many times really and what did you do cried myself to sleep and did you ever see that girl again nope and don't you think joy mode would help you yes (laughs) yes <laughs> <laughs> so guys you do not want to be like sergio and not get laid because he couldn't get his willy up so you're gonna head on to joy mode and use our discount code x the podcast at checkout to get 20 percent off your entire order and just get away from that whole situation because i don't even want to know what that was but i'm i'm still recovering okay so here you go take the entire box thank you <laughs> if you don't have money do not date focus on yourself Work on yourself, Mm -hmm. create something for yourself, and then you'll get the quality girl you want. But I think if you're dating and you're broke, look, I think back in the day, maybe in our parents' generation, it was a lot different. Mm. You know, like maybe maybe it kind of worked. You were starting off. Women were more like traditional. I want to say a little bit more traditional. I think that that kind of vibe worked more where that's what I'm saying. It's like fucked up now because women are kind of being shown the world. Mm. So they almost like in a way expect so much. So it's like men who are like average or good looking don't even have a chance with the girl they in the past would have had a chance with because now those girls are being flown out to fucking X, Y, and Z. So it's tough. But I also think that like we've come to a place where like, an average girl of like five or six, it's gonna sound really mean, feels like she's like, <laughs> this is gonna be so <laughs> savage. I'm like, wait, how do I say this? Like a girl who who could be like a four, five or six, I, I don't wanna like be mean about yeah, looks yeah. and stuff, but is expecting that same kind of like privilege as somebody who's a lot, you know, yeah, yeah. prettier the same thing for guys too respectfully if i want a certain girl no it's different for guys because you could be a four or five and still pick up if you have money money well that's what i was about to say like for me if i'm a if i'm a if i'm a let's say for example i'm a, like a seven or an eight physically yeah if i'm in competition you think you're with, a seven or eight i don't know i'm not saying that <laughs> <laughs> but girls like, comment down below <laughs> if, but if i'm dealing if my competition is a guy who's a four or five physically but it has money i'm getting out beaten like to, to go on what you said like physicality for us it doesn't go a long way yeah like our physical attributes like sure it's a good it's a bonus but some girls it depends it depends on what you want but if we're talking about the girls who are used to seeing like being flown out and that yeah. kind of lifestyle me respectfully in comparison to these other players i'm i'm a nobody you're losing i'm a loser you're a loser <laughs> Yeah, I guess. <laughs> but the thing too, what's I think what's important to, to point out is like you also have to know like who you're dating. Like if you're dating a girl who wants a certain lifestyle, like even if you're making good money, but if you feel like you're not going to be able to like adhere to her needs or her wants and her kind of lifestyle, like you don't have to go for her. Like you don't have, you shouldn't have to try to make someone to live a um, a lifestyle to how much you're making if she wants something more. Let her go. Let her try to find the man that she wants to attract and yeah. let that be the end of that. It's so true. Rather than trying to like make it work. 
I totally agree with you. And I think a lot of the times, sometimes guys who like are making money, but they're not at the level like that their girls want them to be. Because I mm. see that a lot. I feel like they're with them because in a way, the girl who wants that lifestyle, that guy really wants to give it to her. So like being with someone who's really hungry and wants that Chanel bag and wants that Birkin and is not at a state where they can give her that, they still like to be around that energy because that's somebody who like, it, it like pushes you mm. to like, you know, you're like, I want to get my that girl that bag. So like, almost like you're feeding into like the energy of that. Yeah. So it's like to be with a girl who almost like wants nothing, but you're creating. At the end of the day, why do guys want to make so much money? It always comes down to girls. Mm. Like it's always at the end of the day, why do guys work so hard for girls? Mm -hmm. So I think like, I don't know. Yeah, no, but it's true. This I mean, whole convo's messy, but yeah. <laughs> but but you're not wrong. I mean, the whole point of why a guy is striving to be the best version of himself is to you know to to attract a mate, right? Yeah. I mean, that's that's the, our whole purpose to be here is for that. If you look at animals, like that's how it is. Like yeah, yet they have to go and exactly right. You, and I mean, listen, like animals have to like show their colors the same way as guys have to, right? Like that's why a lot of guys will have zero dollars in their bank account, but they'll be repping Gucci head to toe. Yeah, with you know, so with bad. jewelry they can't afford, right? Uh -huh. Only because that that's what girls associate to wealth and status, and that's what's what nowadays is deemed as attractive. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest. I used to think the guy with the Rolex, the mm. guy with all these things. I used to, because even if you could think, yeah, those people could be wearing all that. It's it's hard to think. Okay, well they're broke, mm -hmm. you know, because it's like they're wearing all that. But recently, in the last two years, I'm like. Half those people are a fraud. Yeah. A fraud. I think a, a big example for that, and like we've both been, like, pe don't get me wrong, people there have a lot of money, a fuck ton of money, but Miami is very much like oh that. Oh my God. People will empty their bank accounts and live paycheck to paycheck yeah. just to afford like the the Lambo yeah. and like the penthouse, but like. They're broke. They're like, like from, from a point of view of how much money like you have in your bank account you're broke yeah right but like yeah sure they have a lot of assets but that's because of all the other players that they're in competition with like that's what it takes to survive in miami unfortunately the thing with that is just a vicious cycle because if you're doing all that and you're spending all your money to get that girl the second you have no money like the girl's gone you're, yeah so that's why i think it's like you have to pick and choose your partner yeah. properly you know yeah. you also want a partner that you can go through war with i think also 100 percent. yeah and like i said it all depends on like where you position yourself like if we dive into the topic of like where should you meet like your ideal partner yeah like if you're going to like you know brickle miami to find your, your future wife chances yeah. are like it's going to be a little bit more like superficial and stuff like that yeah. but if you're going to the beach every single day you might you know cross paths with someone who's a runner or, or yeah. who's like a gym freak or someone who likes to play volleyball right? i think so, it's it's definitely on your interests you know so mm -hmm. like if you love to work out then like your chances of probably meeting somebody are going to be more in that space yeah. you know i think it's also a lot of people are like oh my god like I, i'm ready for a relationship i don't know why i'm not finding anyone well it's like well are you at the club every weekend <laughs> yeah, exactly. you know what i mean like it's like where are you looking for these people yeah. you know like go to charity events go, go to, to the church places. go to church everybody should go to church yes are you religious nope. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we won't get into that topic. <laughs> no. How do you keep the passion alive in a relationship? Let's say, because you've been in a long-term relationship for like mm -hmm. seven years, no? Mm -hmm. How do you keep the passion? Honestly, the easiest one is just dates. Okay. I feel like people have dropped the ball on dates long-term. And that you should always be taking your girl on a date. Like the, the same feelings you guys had when you guys went on your first few dates yeah. should be the same thing that you consistently look for like even seven years deep i agree with that you know i think i i have this like vision of like when i have kids when i have my partner mm. like i want to still i know life gets so hard and like when you have kids everyone's like it's different mm -hmm. as a mom you, you don't have that willingness to like want to go out with your partner but like i want to make that a priority like sure. kids or not like we're gonna have a babysitter we're going to have my mom taking care of them. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like that's a lot of the times what happens. You like lose yourself once you have kids, you well, know, for because sure. they're their priority. But like, I think you still need to work on the foundation. Yeah. Which is the parents, right? Yeah. So like, if you guys are ignoring each other and the foundation shit, and then the, the kids feed off that energy very, very easily. Yeah. So then like everything just like gets thrown out of whack. Yeah. Facts. And also the thing too about, about dating in general is that I think people just, get into a relationship to begin with 
like just to settle like people like especially like how like we were talking about just before i feel like a lot of guys will just get into a relationship because they haven't gotten like attention from a female in a long time mm. so they'll kind of just like settle for whatever's giving them attention do you get what i'm saying yeah i get what you're saying so i feel like when you get into something like that i feel like even long term like it's going to creep up on you the reality is like you settled for someone who wasn't meant for yeah. you yeah how do you know as a guy if you're settling um that is a good question. I don't think you really know it until like... Until six months when the walls come down. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, essentially that's that. Until like the true colors start to come out, I don't think you really like know, unfortunately. I feel that if you are a guy who knows your worth and you know what you bring to the table and you know what your value is, it's a lot easier to filter out who could be a potential partner. Mm -hmm. But I feel like if you're dating young, it's very hard to know if the person is right for you or not or if you're settling. Right. Because like I didn't know. I yeah, was, you know, I, I, my long term relationship, I got into it when I was like 21, right? Like, I didn't, like, I was working at Best Buy for crying out loud. Like, I didn't know what there was to the world. Right. I knew what I wanted for myself, uh, but I just didn't know that I was settling for less because I was so invested in my relationship. In my mind, it was like, no, this has to work. I have to do whatever it takes to make this relationship work. But that's work. good that you have that willingness to like want to commit and like make it work. Mm -hmm. I think that's like beautiful and I think it's really lost in our generation now. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of the times, because there's so many options, because. You know, like you can just swipe left and right. It's easier to be like, well, I'm not going to work on this and fix this. I'm just going to kind of like, you know, end it. Mm. So I think when I look at like my parents who are together, like it, there's no other option. It's like we're going to make this work. And I think in, in some way that's kind of so beautiful. Yeah. Like, you know, but yeah. but yeah. OK, so why do men cheat, Sergio? <laughs> <laughs> are you dying of heat? You want me to open the door? No, I'm OK. OK, I'm, I think I'm OK. Let me open a bit actually. I watched back this video and I'm like sweating bullets. <laughs> no, I'm dying. <laughs> um, Do you think men or women cheat more? Oh, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> um, I think men cheat more. Yeah. I think men cheat more, um, like physically, but also like unintentionally cheat more as well. What do you mean by I feel like they'll entertain more like girls in the DMs or like liking pictures and stuff like that. So like like micro cheating, but also like the blank like cheating. Yeah. I think men do it more. Okay. I feel like. How do girls do it? Definitely emotional cheating for yeah. sure, which I think is worse in a certain degree. <sighs> I, I feel like if a guy stabs just, you in the heart well yeah if a guy just sleeps with the girl it was like you know it happened it was fucked up don't get me wrong for sure but for a girl to like gain feelings for another guy like behind your partner's back yeah or like be up. talking to someone else about the relationship and like confiding no, in someone else yeah that's really fucked up but my counter to that would be if you are a man who treats a woman completely properly and mm. is emotionally there for her, because why would a, a woman like emotionally cheat? Because she feels like in her relationship, I'm not saying it's right, but yeah. she feels she's not heard. So you're not listening to her. So I think like there's reasons why it happens. Yeah. In my personal experience, yeah. women have always been the ones to like check out mentally first and then break up. Yeah. If that makes sense. A hundred percent. So I feel like girls after relationship, it might seem like they bounce back quicker, but it's also because like in the, the relationship that they were in. Oh, they were already, we were already, already done gone. before it, it yeah. happened where like men deal with it afterwards. Exactly. It like hits them like a ton of bricks. Yeah. And like to them, it comes, it seems like it's out of the blue. Like yeah. I don't, I don't get why she left me, but the reality is like, like there's been like six months to a year of contemplating leaving you. Yeah. You know? So why do men cheat? For 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 a lack of physical attention, if anything, I think men will just react out of the spur of like their their desire to want to hook up. You know. Yeah. Um, I mean, Instagram is a is a big problem. Like mm -hmm. the amount of eye candy that a guy has access to. It's like let's say for example, like a guy has all these OnlyFans girls and all these supermodels, and that's what he's consuming on a daily basis. And respectfully the girl that he's with is not to the same fake caliber that's on yeah. social media he's going to be like why am i like i want this but i don't have that right so yeah. like as soon as there's somebody that that's like remotely hotter or more attractive like they're going to want to sleep with that because that's what they're it's attracted like, to for sure you know, which is fucked up 
Which but, is why I think I used to say in the past, like, I don't care if like my guy likes a girl's pics or like don't comment, but like like or if they're already following, like it's not a big deal, like whatever, you know. But like as I'm getting older, I'm like, no, 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 no. Their feed and who they're following says everything I need to know about them. Mm-hmm. Like I, I think that your eyes are like such a powerful thing and what you spend your time looking at is who you kind of are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think like a guy who has that kind of control to be able to like not make that a priority and not kind of because you are what you consume. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, someone who's kind of like who has that control, I think it's it's very attractive. Yeah. Um, OK, so would you date a girl who has only fans? You wouldn't? Can't do it. Would you say you changed your mind on that from like prior to now or, or has that always been like a thing? Uh, if I met someone who was doing OnlyFans, I wouldn't be able to. Uh, sorry, if I met someone, she was already doing OnlyFans and I really, really liked her. Sure. Like I'm just saying like hypothetically. Wait, if you met her and she was doing yeah, it? Yeah, no, I fucked up. If, if I met a girl and she was doing OnlyFans, one, I wouldn't date her. Okay. But let's just say hypothetically, like I would accept her if I wanted to date her because she was already doing it. Wait, I'm not following. I'm just, I, I'm giving a hypothetical situation. Like, if I wanted to date a girl that had an OnlyFans, okay. like, I wouldn't be stop. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't be able to say, like, stop doing OnlyFans to be in a relationship with me. Oh, okay, you I just would wouldn't pursue that it. type of person. Yeah. And if you were, then you would be accepting to it. I would be accepting it. of it, yeah. Okay. Uh, that but, was a very politician answer. Yeah, I know. Like, can you just, like, yeah, so you're not no, going to date a no, girl? No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't date a girl that had an OnlyFans. <laughs> okay, got it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just, it's just not my thing. Yeah, but would you sleep with a girl who has OnlyFans? That's a different story. That's a different story. <laughs> oh my god! I already know. I like know you. Like I see it in your face before you even say. It. But I mean, who wouldn't? Yeah. I mean, I guess. Would you date a guy that had an OnlyFans? Never in my life. Would you hook up with a guy that had OnlyFans? Never oh, in okay. my life. Never, never mind. <laughs> never. Back. Oh my god! No! 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 Really? No. This is when you drop your only yeah, A link in the description box below. <laughs> Wait, have you thought about doing an only vans? No. No, really? No. I feel like you guys, all four of you, should, <laughs> what would you guys call it? Sergio doesn't talk. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sergio shows. <laughs> and you're still, it's a show production. Exactly. It's still underneath the same umbrella. It's still us. But no, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to do iconic, that. Pretty iconic, honestly. No, 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 no. I couldn't do that. I don't know. It's not, it's not me. Especially like even now, like if anybody looks at my feed, there's not a single picture of me. Really? Not a single one. I didn't. Uh, I didn't. Uh, no, I just repost the the podcast content. And that's it. I don't like. I don't like. One, I'm not a photogenic person. Two, I don't like taking pictures. There's nothing wrong. I have nothing against people that take pictures or selfies against themselves. But for me, if I were to do it, I feel like it's too much. Like, look at me. Yeah. And I really don't like that. Yeah. Which is ironic because. Look at me. Yeah, look at me. <laughs> look at my <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Got it, got you it. You know what I mean? I know what you mean. So it's like, whatever. So they say when you meet someone, you fall into one of the three categories. Automatically, a guy puts a girl in one of three categories. Fuck, marry, friend. Yep. Would you agree with that? Mm-hmm. How long does it take you to realize that? 60 seconds. 60 seconds? 60 seconds. Uh, what? A guy knows within the first 60 seconds in what category he puts you in. And how? Like, what? What makes you decide that? It's it. It doesn't take much to 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 give it to away. Fuck up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. To fuck up or to show like what the girl's intentions is. You know, like I feel like for the most part, girls are pretty straightforward when you when you meet them. Like they're not interested. They're not interested, right? Yeah. And I feel like like as you're having a conversation, like if a guy is like he's he's aware, he knows what kind of energy she's giving. And like if it's, if it's either she's interested, not interested, she just wants to hook up with you or she's wifey material. Really? You yeah. feel like girls go into it like, sh- like how, how do you, okay, wait, how do you know when a girl is just like, I want to hook up? Uh, Like she's, she's more touchy. Okay. You know, she's like more like she closes like the, like the, the distance between you two. Okay. You know, how do you know when someone's ready to date? Um, we're, we're, It feels more like of a chase where like she's giving you a little bit, but not enough to make you think that yeah, you're only going to be hooking up. Okay, that's fair. You know, and the friend is just like when you're like, I'm not romantically. Yeah, um, and like the distance is further apart. Like she's she's throwing you hints like you're gonna make a great boyfriend one day. Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like yeah, how yeah. the conversation flows. Like you'll be able to pick up on certain mannerisms that like you, your friend zone, pal. <laughs> Take a seat. <laughs> Do you think that once you're in the friend zone, you can get out? 
Uh, depends. I I would think so. I think for most people, you're stuck in the friend zone for sure. Yeah. Uh, but like if already if you're selling just to be friends, that's already like a like you're stuck. Yeah. And what about? I had got this question. If a girl is kind of asking for advice from a guy. Hmm. Does that guy have a chance with her if he's if she's going into it asking advice from a, a male's perspective, but that guy wants to pursue her? Listen, I have never been in that situation, but that within itself already sounds like a mess. Like you're setting her up to be with Mr. Right. So like, why are you like st- staying around? Right, maybe because they've been friends for so long. Can't do that. Okay. I don't think I don't think I don't think you're setting yourself up to end up with her. You've never watched Friends with Benefits? No, is that a movie? Yes. No. Mila Kunis, Papa. No. Oh, wait. Ashton, Ashton Kutcher. Kutcher. I, I've, I've seen it. Yeah. Yeah, but that's a uh, movie. Yeah, nothing's never. And, like liked. they've been having sexual tension with each other, so it's like yeah. Like if you like like platonic, like just friends, like I don't think it's gonna happen. Yeah. I think I think guys are a lot more delusional when they're in the friend zone than girls are. I think guys are always thinking that they have a chance with her. And I think that the guys are usually the ones that are settling for the friend zone in the hopes to be able to hook up with her eventually. Why is it that a lot of the times guys will, let's say you're talking with a girl, okay? Mm. And then it ends, you're like seeing each other or maybe have dated. Mm. Why is it that all your friends are lined up after like in the DMs? Like, why is that a thing with men? I've heard those things. I find it so weird. Yeah, right? Choose better friends. Yeah. Because that just sounds stupid to me. I've never had that ever. I've heard of circumstances that that's happened. And it's like, those are like, those are not your friends to begin yeah. with. So, yeah. Who's more in the wrong in that case, would you say? Um, well, if the men are shooting their shot afterwards, it's them because they're the ones mm-hmm. like with that are showing the intent. Yeah. Right? And they're going behind their friends back. The girls on the receiving end just receiving the DMs. Yeah. If she entertains them, they're both equally in the wrong. No, the right? guy's more in the wrong. You think so? Yeah. But if she's entertaining, she it's doesn't like, owe you anything as much oh, as the guy you guys does. Broke up. Well, yeah. I mean, she owes you the respect of having sure, been in a sure, relationship with for you. For sure. For sure. She shouldn't entertain, but I'm saying the guy's more in the wrong. Yeah. Your friend should have more your back than I think. A girl you're no longer with. I'd murder each and every one of them yeah. respect, respectfully. <laughs> respectfully. Yeah, I think that's why our dynamic, like me and my friends, work so well. Like I said, we all have different types. So yeah. like essentially, like my girls' types are not my friends. So what's what's Carl's type? Carl's type is either Latinas or like anything that's like uh, Middle Eastern. Okay, what's Matt's type? Matt's type is dark features, so brunettes. Okay. Um, I'd say that that's pretty much it. I know it's a very vague answer, but yeah. you, you get the stick. Um, and Michu is Asians. Just Asians? A- anything Asian. Okay. It's gi- Chinese, Japanese, Korean. I heard that... <laughs> I heard that Chinese girls have, like, the best pussies. Ask him. <laughs> <laughs> you never asked him this? <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, he's, he's like, he vouches for it. So I'm I assuming, heard they're yeah. like tiny, tiny, tiny. It's possible. Hey, listen, <laughs> comment down below if it's true. <laughs> and your type? My ex. Okay. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> Do you see a future where like maybe potentially like after you guys both like, you know, have like kind of lived your life where it could potentially be something that's like thought about again? Maybe. Um, it, it, it could be. I mean, look, we're in similar fields, more or less. Yeah. Uh, chances that we cross paths further down the line is there. Um, but uh, who knows? Everything's been, ha- you know, going around full so- circle. So- yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everything's been going around. <laughs> Everything has been going around full circle so far. So I don't know. I don't. I just, you don't. I've, yeah. Like to I've say. I've given up on life and expectations so yeah. long ago that I'm just like. Just but I feel it. like when you get there, it's the best feeling in a way. Like mm. you're almost so numb that like the best things start to happen to you in yeah. like the best way because mm-hmm. you're not like putting this kind of like pressure on yourself to like need to be here and need to have that and when you're just like over it i feel like you attract naturally what's best for you yeah because you're not the, forcing it i was just about to say the moment that you start seeking it that's when like you start like digging your own grave kind yeah. of thing yeah i agree do we go over everything can't be can't be um okay what about red flags in women 
Is that like the same as like X? I guess. No, I feel like because like like red flags. I feel like they're they're like pet peeves almost. It's yeah. Like, like a red flag for me is she if she uses Snapchat. Okay. But I make money me, on Snapchat. Yeah. Well, you know, red flag. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like if she uses Snapchat as like a form of communication. Oh yeah. I can't do that. Like, what are you trying to hide in those messages? Like, if your Snap score is up there. The yeah, sh- to Snap the streets. Score. Who the fuck uses Snapchat? Listen, that's a, that's an indicator for a lot of people to determine if she's for the streets. The streets. Yeah, <laughs> that to me is a red flag for sure. <laughs> no, those are fine. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's also a huge red flag if a guy is a Snapchat. Like, what? Like, imagine if a guy comes up to you and he's like, "Yo, what's your Snap?" I have had that before, and I'm like, fr- literally, like, respectfully, wrong girl. <laughs> what do you, What do you prefer? Do you prefer that a guy asks like for your Instagram or for your phone number? Phone number. Really? Yes. More than Instagram? Yes. Wow. I feel like it's like takes a lot of. It's like more mature. It takes a lot of balls. Mm. Instagram's more like. You're playing it safe. Because mm-hmm. then if you ask for Instagram, it could be like, oh, well, I have a boyfriend. Well, it's like, oh, well, yeah, you, you can still follow me on Instagram. Where, like, number is like, I'm interested in you. I want to pursue you. That's what I think. And it's a little bit more old-fashioned. And truthfully, like, even a guy I'm talking to now, we don't follow each other on Instagram. And I don't know why I feel so good about it. Mm. I don't know if it's because I'm, like, insecure in what he could see on the podcast, which he's probably still watching. <laughs> <laughs> but, like... <laughs> but I think I don't know it's just that feeling of like get to know me mm. but then again if I'm talking to a guy like are you crying on your stories I'm gonna go check your Instagram yeah, also. so I, I get it I get but I get why people want to see who you are before before but like I don't know I'm but a numbers girl but don't you feel like also because like let's say for example I could only imagine for a girl how many times she you know she's been asked to give a phone number don't you feel like at a given point like you've given your phone number away like too much no, because if I don't want to give it, I don't give, you it. Don't give it. I just that's say fair. sorry, I can't. I have a boyfriend. Like that's the number one the line. Go-to. I can't. No. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Damn, I've been giving the wrong advice then. I've been telling guys to ask for Instagram. The only reason why I say Instagram because it's less personal, and like especially girls, like there's there's a lot of creepy men out there, mm-hmm. right? So like to not make the girl feel like too pressured or giving like such you know vulnerable information to that guy. Yeah, I feel like Instagram is like the one that you could like make her feel like the safest, where it's like you're not a creep that you're asking for like her personal phone number. Yeah, and but you're also like you're not like you're not a loser. Like you're you're still gonna get her information somehow. Yeah, no, I get all the reasons why you do it, and I think to some girls that's probably gonna apply even more. Mm. I think for me, it's also just the feeling of. Every girl kind of knows, you know, when you're first talking to a guy and then you start following them on Instagram. I feel like we don't realize, but we start doing things on Instagram and our stories that might cater more towards them. And we're feeling I don't I don't know how to explain Mm. it. Like low key, we might be catering our content more towards what we think they want Whereas I feel like phone number is like you have to let your imagination kind of run wild and you have to actually put in the effort to like get to know who I really am. Okay, I get it. Whereas I think like you might get false hope on Instagram because Mm. then it's like we're trying to be someone we're not and it's like everyone's guilty of that, you know, a little bit. So I think it's a, a little bit more of a mature, natural like growth. So I have a question then. Yes. Because a lot of guys think yeah that when a girl posts a story that it's intentionally meant for like a specific person is that true um uh, i would say like yes and no with Mm. that it really depends it really depends because honestly like i think men think a lot of times like women get hot and like dress up and do makeup and put clothes for men Mm -hmm. but a lot of the times it's really just like for us and for other girls and i know it's going to sound really crazy look yes i think a lot of the times women do things for the approval of other women in some weird fucked up way but i don't so going back to your question i don't think I don't know. I think it's maybe like wanting attention. I don't think it's maybe always someone specific, mm. but it could be. Okay, well, I should it say could this. Be, yeah. If like, you're interested in a guy, the stories that you post, are they now intentionally for him? Maybe, yeah, slightly, yeah. Like, so, like unconsciously? Yeah, subconsciously, subconsciously for sure. What the fuck? I think when you're like, why do you think girls are always like scrolling down to see if like that person saw? It's they like, do that? Yeah. Wow. Do, do men not do that ever? Yeah, for sure. 
Okay. I know. No, I'm saying yeah because I I I live with guys. I know that that's what they do. Yeah. Yeah. I can't do that though. It's a lot of energy. It's it's like it, I, I got to the point where I can't do that anymore. But I I've been there. I've been that girl. Like, wait, did that person see? So if you're looking for that person to see if they saw, then you are absolutely catering your content for that yeah. person, right? Yeah. So it's uh it's tough. No, I can't do that. Like especially like if you're like if people are watching your stories like in the thousands, you're scrolling and then yeah. oh you didn't see it. Maybe in like two three hours. It's just so much energy. That's why I think like I've changed my perspective and mind on like um, whether or not like I'm going to keep following someone. So let's say like mm. I had a thing with someone and then we're no longer like talking anymore. Something happened or just I'm like turned off for me. Like I will hit that unfollow button mm. and it's not a petty like unfollow. I think for me sometimes like like I was saying before, like what we consume takes over us and i don't give a fuck if i'm no longer interested in you like i don't give a fuck to see your stuff and if it ended badly then what i'm gonna spend my time looking to still see if you saw for validation like no i i need to do it for myself yeah because like, what more is that gonna bring you i, I need to make sure that like oh you're not watching my stuff i'm not watching your stuff like i'm just like i'm over it mm. you know but like it depends it depends the situation but a lot of times i'm just like unfollow because i just i don't want to see it would you still follow an ex after you break up but, and if so like how long after would you unfollow um so i still follow my ex-boyfriend we i think how i felt about it then and how i feel about it now is probably different mm -hmm. if my partner wanted me to unfollow them i probably my like my new partner mm -hmm. i pro i would but like i think i don't know like it really depends how it ended and like like you were saying like normally when a girl checks out she checks out mm -hmm. before so i think i was so done mm -hmm. the like the the instagram wasn't bothering me at that point yeah but also this was a guy who wasn't really out there like posting things so right if he started posting girls and stuff it probably would have been a different situation but mm -hmm. because he was very low-key even on his instagram it didn't affect me much yeah but i think it depends if you're a person that's out there completely different gotta go out you know what are what are your um what are your thoughts on andrew tate because I started off, I did an episode with Veronica in the past talking mm -hmm. about Andrew Tate and my thoughts. And I completely changed my mind and my thoughts on him and what he stands for. From him back then to now? Back then now? I had so much like to say. Mm -hmm. um, I called him insecure, which that point I still think at some points he mm -hmm. could be a little mm -hmm. but um i feel like i actually have a lot of respect for the man yeah and i agree with a lot and i think he's shaping a lot of men into being like men yeah and we need a lot more of that in a world where like i feel like the government and everyone is trying to make men pussies <laughs> yeah to a certain degree it's not wrong i mean listen i i agree with a lot of things that he says i don't agree with how he used to deliver it mm -hmm. the way that he used to come across how he used to say things the terms that he would use a lot of it was backed by misogyny, right? But I understand that. But you understand that he doesn't really mean exactly, that. which yeah. is why, like, you know, I'm not some internet, you know, hater yeah. that's like quick to like, comment down below, right? Like, I understand what he's trying to do. He's a businessman. He knows how things work, and he's made a fortune from haters. Yeah, literally. Unfortunately, the way to make, unfortunately, the way to grow on Instagram is to kind of like attack yeah. and like be savage yeah you have to go for clicks you have right? to go for clicks so you're gonna say things in a certain way to get noticed mm -hmm. which i think is another thing that's fucked up about social media like if you're there talking like health and wellness it's like it's so easy for people to say fucked up shit because yeah. they know that they're gonna get the clicks yeah exactly and it's hard to talk down on him especially because he is uh, very uh, much so like he's, he's an accomplished individual right mm -hmm. like physically he's there mentally he's very you know articulate he talks very well he has money right so there's a lot of things that he's been able to accomplish that you can't really talk down on his accomplishments because he's living proof of it right yeah the like, one thing yeah is his many wives situation his men the, the one thing i would say that i really don't agree with is having several wives yeah no that i wouldn't be able to do i really don't agree with it but then when i really think about why he wants that and for having like many kids and and kind of like having like a fucking army mm -hmm. 
of Tate's running around. Yeah. I still don't agree, but I understand where it's coming yeah. from. You understand from his point of view why he would want that. Yeah. And to him, why it might make sense. Yeah. But it's not something that we condone. But then when you really think about it, it's like an ego complex. Like, why do you really feel like you need this whole army of kids in order to, like, it's, yeah. you know? But Yeah. I personally feel, I feel like he wants many of them because he hasn't yet found the one that he truly does love. Do you get know what I'm saying? Or he hasn't even allowed himself. That that it's 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 possible. I don't I don't know, right? But I feel like for every man that truly, like undoubtedly loves one girl, will be willing to just want to settle for that one girl, regardless of how much money he has. I feel like if you want multiples because you really haven't found the one that's able to like want you to just settle for her only. Yeah. You know? facts because like even me morally even if i wanted to like even if my girl were to say like yeah you could have like another girlfriend whatever like morally i wouldn't be able to do it even if i have the green light i wouldn't be able to do it yeah i agree i agree and also like i don't know it just goes against my fucking religion everything i stand for honestly i don't i don't agree with that Mm. and i also think like how so much energy how do you like have to deal with so many girls and their problems like i would be like i can't do this already one fucking man is too much one girl is too much like how are you fucking entertaining all these people like i'm exhausted you have to have them by appointment (laughs) savage well sir this was so fun thank you so much for coming on any last words um (laughs) uh, pay for the first date (laughs) <laughs> don't use snapchat and uh don't interrupt as we girl. both do <laughs> exactly it's true and yeah don't date an influencer or anybody that has a podcast <laughs> can we talk about that before we end do you know how hard it is it's i struggle because uh, people are like oh, i love your dating stories like be authentic and then i'm like this is so fresh this is so recent i'm gonna fuck shit up yeah. but then i'm like you know what if they're truly meant for me They'll like they're it. gonna be okay with it and like it depends the person yeah for for that kind of business like, i don't really talk about my business like that yeah my other co-hosts have no problem about it <laughs> for me personally it's just it's not my thing um but also like it's also weird like girls like shooting their shot or trying to get a noah girl and she's basing herself off of the content she's consumed rather than like like getting to know you from scratch yeah like we don't even start like in the same ballpark that's why i'm saying like it scares me when a guy like goes and like watches my stories Mm because i feel like you go watch my trailers i don't feel it sounds really crazy and it is me but i don't feel it's like one version of me yeah like you're gonna go on a date with me you're gonna get to know me and i'm completely different Mm -hmm. it's not that i'm being two-faced it's just it's showbiz there's Mm -hmm. certain things ways of saying it and then it's still who I am, but like I, I just think sometimes it'll rub a guy the wrong way, and I'm like, no, 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 like mm-hmm. maybe that's not who I am. Like, wait. Yeah, hundred percent. But also, like, think about it like this: you guys have, like, you you guys have how many episodes now? You Hundreds? guys. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> just me. You know, <laughs> uh, we're like one seventy. Okay, so imagine if a guy were to go back and watch like episode one. No, I don't. Please don't. No, but you get what I mean, though. Like, yeah. who, like it's like you can't base yourself off of like the content you're consuming, right? So like, if. For me, mm-hmm. I would have a much harder time getting to know a girl if she already knew me from social media. Yeah. I'd much rather still meet someone who like doesn't know me. A hundred percent. Because I think like even me, there's so much outlandish shit I used to say that I don't agree, agree with, with anymore. And that's the thing. Like people are growing every day and have different opinions and thoughts and then change their mind on it. But they're not doing it on a video and on a on a mic Mm -hmm. whereas this it's like documented so it's like well yeah well you said that i'm like yeah but i don't feel that way anymore you're just doing it in like real life time and i'm doing it where it's like here's the proof Mm. and it that's the hard thing about it showbiz showbiz um but yeah well thank you so much for coming on you're gonna come back on you're like chill (laughs) (laughs) thank you you're welcome we're done adios you're listening to the like X follow and subscribe podcast. to not only sergio's patreon <laughs> but to mine my only fans yeah <laughs>